Lesson 7.5 A Probability Distributions A discrete probability distribution lists each possible value the random variable can assume together with its probability. A probability distribution must satisfy the following conditions. The first condition is the probability of each value of the discrete random variable is always between 0 and 1 inclusive. So mathematical notation is Px is between 0 and 1. So as you see, each one has an equal sign over here. The second condition is the sum of all the probability is equal to 1. Otherwise, it is not probability distribution. Okay, then think about the following two questions. Determine if these two tables are probability distributions or not. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. Please pause this video and combine this px value and determine whether this table represent a probability distribution table or not. If you combine them, the total sum becomes 1.07. So this condition is not satisfy this second condition here. Therefore, this table doesn't represent a probability distribution table. How about the second table here? Although the sum may be 1, however, you know, each probability value must be between 0 and 1, right here, right? But, as you see, those two values, they are already over 1 or negative 1. And this is also negative value here. Probability distribution value never going to be negative or over 1. Therefore, the second table also it is not a probability distribution table. Then look at next question here. Constructing and graphing a discrete probability distribution. So in order to doing now we want to use percentage value or the probability value instead of frequency value. Therefore, you need to find the relative frequency for each category. As you know, the relative frequency, you can divide each frequency value divided by total frequency. If you combine this or the total become 150 here, so now, let's find out each axis probability value. So simply, you divide each x divided by total. Then the first one, you will get 0 0.16. Second one, 0 0.22. And third one, 0.28. Fourth one, you will get 0 0.22. Two, and last one is point fourteen here. So if you combine all this value, it must be equal to one. Now, how to find the mean value using probability distribution table? So last time when we using frequency value, we need to find total of each value and divide uh, using the formula basically x times fx divided by total number of frequency value because we are using probability now we multiply x and px here good therefore if you do x times px then you will get those following values now you combine all this value, you will get 
2.94. Okay. Usually, we divide the total value by total number of frequency. But as you see, in the probability case, total sum equal to 1 here. Therefore, this is going to be our mean value here. But now, one thing we have to make sure, whenever we convert sample data value to probabil probability distribution, then it is going to be population data. Even though we begin with sample, but now you switch the sample data to probability data value, then it is going to be population distribution. The reason is, if you look at only this probability value here, and now, let's say we, we, we don't know any of, anything about this here, then can you guess the total number of data and each data of category? No, because um, based on this, I may guess 16, 22, 28, 2, 14. Or, if you think this is 1000 data, then you may say 160, 220, 280, uh, 200, 140, like that. So there are many different cases we can generate based on this probability. So we cannot define the specific number of sample. Therefore, always the probability distribution is population data value. Therefore, we can notate mu equal to 2.94. Okay, then let's start starting find out the variance and the standard deviation. So the last time we multiply x squared times frequency value. So the same thing. So we multiply x squared times px instead here. Okay, if you calculate then, you will see the following values. And now you combine the last column, the value becomes 24.26 here. So you, we almost find the variance and the standard deviation. Okay, so let's go back to maybe chapter 1, I mean chap chapter 2 again. So how to find the variance? The variance formula, sigma square equal to square root n times uh, sum of x square times f minus sum of x f square over n times n minus 1, right? But now, in this case, what's the total n? Because we are using probability, now we can switch them to the sigma square equal to square root n times the sum of x square times px minus sum of x times px square over n times m minus 1, right? But as you see, what is the total px? That is equal to 1 here. Therefore, you know, this, the bottom doesn't make sense. So we don't need this part here because there's no n equal to 1 just. So, therefore, this will be the standard deviation formula here. Okay? Of course, you can square this out, then it's going to be variance, but now you just do square root uh, sigma x squared times px minus sigma x times px squared, then you can find the variance. Then let's calculate it. So let's find out the variance first. So sigma square equal to sum of x squared times p x minus sum of 
x times p x square. Okay, then uh, this is going to be so twenty four point twenty six minus two point ninety four square. Then it is going to be. Fifteen point six one six four. Therefore, sigma equal to square root fifteen point six one six four. That is three point nine five one eight. Okay. Therefore, we found mean value is two point ninety four. And the variance 15.6164 and the standard deviation 3.9518.